Thursday, May 27, 1937, Lieutenant Lloyd Murdoch got up in a courtroom and shot John Liluohe three times. Over on the mainland, they call him a hero. Their only complaint against him is that he didn't kill the other three boys. Here in Hawaii, people know only fear. Fear of what could happen next. We've brought my brother here to this cove. And the speech which were his favorites. My brother died because he could never pass anyone who needed help. He was accused of a crime he didn't commit. Shot dead in cold blood before he ever got a chance to defend himself. The people who stole this island, these islands, never gave him a chance. It's 159 years since Captain Cook came. But most of the people who followed haven't unpacked. They haven't unlocked their front doors except for each other. And even that's not the real trouble. The real trouble is that deep down, they believe they own us. And that's why they believe John Liluohe was guilty. And that's why he's dead. They wouldn't let him live here. So we won't let him stay here. He loved this ocean. And that's where we'll take him. And that's where he'll always be. Goodbye, John. You know those young bucks walking the beach better than I do. You think you can find a half a dozen good ones? Yeah, half a dozen. Put them on Mike Romero, David Masuda, and Harry, what's his name? Shigeru. Yeah. I want a 24-hour guard on each of them so they don't get killed waiting for a new trial. Where any one of them goes, a cop goes, including the toilet. 323 to headquarters. Three, two, three, go ahead.
Rendre. What Murdoch did was bad enough. What the natives might do in revenge could be a lot worse. Well, the natives don't have a history of taking revenge. This is my command, Harvey. I can't stand around with my finger in my ear waiting for the island to go up in flames. I couldn't even guarantee the safety of Doris and Hester out at Windward alone. Here I can. So I went out there and got them. That must have been a stormy operation. Yes. Doris is a determined woman, as you know. <laughs> it's part of her charm. <laughs> Doris, Harvey's here. Well, Harvey, you've come to see the prisoner. You're not a prisoner. You have the run of the place. But I can't leave. Oh, Glenn moved you out here for your own good, Doris. Glenn didn't ask me. I brought you the papers. Lloyd Murdoch only has one chance. Walter Bergman. The Washington lawyer? The old man? His mind isn't old. And he is the best criminal lawyer alive. This genius must be expensive. $25,000 in all expenses for him and his wife. That's outrageous. You need him, Doris. I don't need him. I didn't kill anyone. I'm not on trial. The sooner a jury frees young Murdoch, the sooner we'll be off the front page and we can all get back to business. You mean you can get back to business, Harvey? I can wait. I've waited a long time for many things. Oh, this nightmare never ends. It will. And we'll put it behind us. Uh, this is Harvey Costa. I want a cable of Mr. Walter Bergman, Washington, D.C. Bergman. Your terms acceptable. Come soonest. I'm always stealing your liberties, York. No, sir, you're not. You're not, sir. It's a real honor that you call on me, sir. You're a true friend. I'll never forget that, sir. Uh, here's the gear you asked me to bring from the ship, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, gave your locker key back to Lieutenant Parker, sir. Yes, yes. Good. It just kills me to see you in here, sir. That's the God's truth. You know what they'd say back home, sir? They'd say, how come the lieutenant waited so long to shoot that bastard? We're a long way from the States. We sure as hell are. I'd never be coming to jail to see you, sir. Those monkeys got everyone believing your wife was lying. And they're free as the breeze. Boy, it's hot in here. They don't have any windows in After here. After what they did, I mean, whose wife are they going to grab next? What time you drop your day to Waikiki that night? I don't know. Around sunrise, I guess. That army nurse never saw Waikiki. She never saw much of you. She left the whispering in at 9 o'clock because you weren't around. Why'd you lie to me? I didn't lie. I told you, there was a lot of booze. Sure. Maybe you just couldn't tell one woman from another that night. What the hell does that mean? You tell me. Virginia Tierney said he disappeared. Where'd you go? Look, I was around. You can ask anybody who was there. I'm asking you. You dumped your date. Where were you? At the party. At the Whispering Inn. Start to finish. Start to finish. I think you're lying again, Parker. I'm not taking any more of this. You can do it now, or you can wait till I come back here with a warrant. I'd like that better, Parker. I'd like you downtown in my health club. All right. Let's talk about the Murdochs. The Murdochs. Hester and Lloyd Murdoch. Look, Lloyd and I are shipmates. You and Hester aren't shipmates. The two of you ever kill any time together? He's my best friend. Parker, you're talking to a cop. I've been watching best friends steal each other's wives since I put on a uniform. Sure. In your league. It happens in Pacific Heights, too. I bet it even happens in the Navy now and then. You haven't answered my question. You and Hester Murdoch ever get lost in the same place? 
You go get your warrant. When I do, it won't be for questioning, Lieutenant. I'll put you away. You're pretty handy with those things, aren't you, tough guy? You ever try using them on something that can hit back? Yes, operator, I'd like the number of Tom Hallehone. He's a lawyer, please. Thank you. Hello? Is this Tom Hallehone? Yes, who's calling? You were the, law the lawyer for Johnny Luohi, is that right? Yes. Who is this? Mr. Halahone, I'm the one. No! Leave me alone! Oh, let go! Who's calling? Who is this? Who's calling? Who is this? Well, what do you know? Nobody sent for you. I'm missing a prisoner. You've been relieved of Lieutenant Murdoch. Continue with your duties. This man's Captain. a murder suspect. Admiral Langdon is taking full responsibility for Lieutenant Murdoch. Your lieutenant committed a crime in Honolulu. A capital crime. He killed a man. That makes him our responsibility, not the Admiral's. I'm ordering you to leave. Lieutenant Murdoch's being taken to Pearl Harbor, where he'll remain until he's due in court. Let's go, Lieutenant. That's the last time you'll ever taunt me. You're through coming in here shooting off your mouth, and I'll tell you something else, Captain Maddox. You're not running this department. I am running this department. I've pulled the guards off those three beach boys. You put them back on now. Those kids need protection. Not while I'm chief. Well, that could end too, then. You don't scare me. You never scared me. New subject. New subject, I said. This, um... Walter Bergman, hotshot lawyer, docs tomorrow. He's important. He's an old geezer besides. He ought to have an escort. You got cops down the Lohan Tower. No. You do it. Hello, Marie. Hello, Kurt. Long time no see. For a fact, how you been? Great. Now I have. Steak's not so good this week. How about some eggs? Sure. Times I've looked at that door. Can't believe you're here. Oh, listen, Ozzy was in the country yesterday. He brought back some smoked bacon. You want to try it? Sure, anything. Why'd you come back, Kurt? To see you. See how you're doing. Maybe give me the key to your place? Maybe. The couple we left off, Kurt? Only if it's different, hon. I won't keep going, though. No worries. Know what I mean? I'm sorry, Marie. So am I, and both of us. But sorrier for you, because I'll make it with someone.
What is it? I'm with the Honolulu Police Department. I came aboard to help Walter Bergman off the ship. I didn't mean to snap at you, Captain. I tried to protect him. Everyone wants to talk to him, and he won't offend. We're almost ready. You're, uh... Mrs. Bergman. Sure. Walter, this man is a police captain. He's here to take us ashore. Well, I couldn't ask for a nicer welcome than that. Happy to make your acquaintance, Captain. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Bergman. It's an honor to meet you. Coming from a policeman to a lawyer, that's a pretty good compliment. We can get started any time you're ready. I'll call her someone to pick up the bank. Mine's in there. Well, that's easy. I put the hotel reservations in your inside pocket. And our return trip tickets are in the big bag. Good. Thank you. I can hardly believe we're in the Hawaiian Islands. It's so exciting being a part of this place. I'm glad you're excited. There's one reason I took this case. I know how boring it gets for you living in one hotel suite after another. I'm not complaining, Walter. Sometimes I wish you would. <clears throat> you all set? Lead the way, Captain. Do you have your chocolates? In my pocket. I'm a diabetic, Captain. Mrs. Bergman keeps me fit. We're looking forward to our stay. My secretary's on vacation. Her relief phoned in sick. And I've got a staff of exactly three, including myself, to handle the entire caseload. Damn psoriasis. Every time the pressure starts, I begin to itch. And you're not facing a rape charge. My well, clients are, though. All they've got so far is a mistrial. Yeah. They're innocent, Mr. Murray. They've got to get their names cleared. They'll never get a job otherwise. Give me a date for a retrial. I got a murder on my hands. Well, let someone else arrange it. Let McAdams do it. I need him on the Murdoch case. How about 30 days from now? 45 days. Come on, Mr. Murray. You don't need time to prepare. It's December 9th. How about... January 24th. This isn't an ordinary homicide. You're a pretty bright fella. Put yourself in my place. I've got to prosecute a man who's clearly guilty of murder. He did it. Half the population of the United States wants him freed. And Walter Bergman is on his way right now to defend him. Walter Bergman. Those three guys might as well be in the middle of the ocean. I'm sorry, Tom. First things first. It'll all get done in due course. It's not fair. You're right. Murray, the county attorney. Probably the discovery and transcript of the mistrial. Much obliged, Captain. Walter, look. Huh? I've never seen such beautiful flowers. They don't seem real. Not to people who are used to harsh winters. They're real enough. There's stuff on this island that'll knock you for a loop. I hope we have time to see it. Why don't you make time? After you get settled, I can show you and Mr. Bergman around. Thank you. That's very kind. Beautiful north, south, east, and west. Makes you feel as though you walked into a fairy tale. Would you like me to order us some lunch? Now, you go on down and get yourself something to eat. I have plenty of work here. Why don't you join me? Thank you. I'm 
I'm fine as is. Hello. Captain. There's plenty of room over here. You're very kind. Thank you, Captain. Listen, I'm a captain when I'm working, but I'm not working now. It's Curtis. Kurt. All right, Kurt. Lenore. I heard your husband. Nora, that's a real special name. I believe that puts me on trial. Not at this table. Is the orchid a standard practice, Captain? Kurt? It is for this stuff. They call it my tie. It looks so exotic. I think I'd like to try it. My tie for the lady. You're in the right place if you like orchids. Oh, I do. They're so ethereal. Oh, we're gonna have to remember that word so I can look it up. <laughs> You're very honest. Shall I define ethereal? No. If I look it up, that'll make this last longer. I think Walter would like this. Usually we dine in our suite. He spends his life in a crowd and I try to spare him when the day is over. Your husband and I are on different sides of the fence. I spend my life putting people behind bars and he gets them out. Send biographies of Doris Ashley, stop. Lloyd Murdoch, stop. Admiral Glenn Langdon, stop. Commander James Enders, stop. Yes, I've got that, sir. How long will it take for this cable to get to Washington? As soon as possible, sir. Well, step on it. Billy? What? Billy. Charge it to Harvey Coster. This, all of this, it's almost simple. Maybe you're just having a good time. Yes, I am. This is all new to me, too. I've never been here. I drink bourbon, not Mai Tais. <laughs> and I always eat alone. Always, Captain? Always. Calm before the storm. It won't last long. Mm. Oh, did you hear? Dr. Tremaine is leaving. He says his wife wants to move back to the States. Her mother's sick. I broke the law. And my oath. I took a chance of losing my license. I could have gone to prison. That abortion could have sent me to prison. Frank, I'm sorry. You promised me the vacancy. In the OR before the abortion, you swore I'd get the next vacancy. And I tried, but the board went against me. You liar! Just calm down. You're afraid somebody would hear me? Everyone in Honolulu will hear me. I'll tell this whole town, but Hester, Ashley, whatever her lousy name is. I think not. Everybody in the territory will know that Doris Ashley's daughter was three months pregnant. Not 33 days, three months. Who are they going to believe? Howard Lansing or Frank Puana? You made me a promise. Get out of here. 
here right now, or I'll have the police drag you out. And if you ever open your mouth about this again anywhere, you're finished here. I'll run you off this island. Right where we're supposed to be. I reconnoitred. Hey. No. Maybe they're in bed. I wish I was. Listen. mouth and I'll blow your slimy head off. Put your hands behind your back. Inside. Inside. Now, you're gonna take us to your pals. Read you something. I confess I raped and beat Hester Murdoch near the Whispering Inn the night of September 5th. We didn't! All you do is sign. But we never touched her! You're not in court now. Don't pull that bilge on me. Go to hell! This is your last chance. You had better sign. Don't talk to him. Don't look at him, David. Close your eyes. You had your chance. You'll sign. I promise you. I'll take David's share. You'll both take his share. Come on. I want him. Do I have to do it all? Sign. We didn't do it. Please, please, please. 
You set those fires? Why? We squeezed the sap out of the bottom of the sugarcane stock. So we burned down to make harvesting easier. That's costly. As soon as the fires are out, the harvest gangs go into the fields with machetes. Then the loaders come along. They gather the harvested canes into 75-pound bundles, and they're taken off to the refinery. How much sugar do you process? A whole lot. You mean every time I pick up a cube for my coffee, I'm putting money in your pocket? <laughs> if it's my sugar. You must be just about the most important man between San Francisco and Hong Kong. Oh, I wouldn't say that. What would you say? Oh, I'm just a fellow that can see to the tip of my nose. In other words, I can add and subtract. What you've shown me so far is the other fellow who does the subtracting. I don't own Honolulu. You don't have any partners. I've never liked to have to take a boat after I've made up my mind. Well, I suppose there are people like that in this world. Mm -hmm. Beginning with Walter Bergman. You didn't bring any partners with you. Never been a man to travel in a pack. I'm glad we understand each other. One more item, my fee. We agreed on your fee. Haven't seen it yet. You haven't started. I started the day I received your cable, so I'll just take half of that $25,000 now, if you don't mind. Sort of payment in advance, you might call it. Give me a little more incentive. A man like you could feel naked without his checkbook. Use my back for a desk. You're not defending me, Mr. I'm not so sure, Mr. Coster. beach with you, Lenore. It's a feast for the eyes. God probably had something like this in mind when he created Eden. What do you say, Captain? Afraid you'd have to ask someone with a lot more experience in that area. <laughs> You're a careful man, Captain. Uh, you in much of a rush? I got some time on my hands right now. Good, good. I thought I'd sit here for a spell. It's my last chance to play hooky, you know? Why don't you two come back for me in a bit, hmm? Sure. Good. At least we got a nice day. Yes. It is nice, Captain. Captain, that puts us back where we started, doesn't it? We haven't started anything. No, I guess we haven't. I'm a married woman, Captain Maddox. Well, that's not news either, so relax. 
Oh, I didn't mean to offend you. I'll get over it. I think it'll be better if I go back. You can't. You'd have to explain it to him. You make me feel guilty. No, that's not my doing. I want us to be honest with each other. We don't need to end up enemies, do we? about the other two? They're upstairs. They're just as bad. Who found them? Pig farmer, Senzo Fujito. They're on Wailuku Road, below Ka'aava. You talked to him yet? No, he's still out of it. Harry? I sedated him. All of them, to ease the pain. <laughs> It won't be coherent until tomorrow. I believe you, Doc. This time. You made a bad mistake, Captain. You should have kept the police guard on these guys. Come on, Jack. Just for the record, Counselor. Captain Maddox didn't pull the cops off those kids. Welcome sight, Mr. Bergman. I'm counting on you to clean up this rotten mess before the trouble spreads. Do my level best, Admiral. This business is a blot on the entire United States Navy. The Academy turns out leaders, not murderers. This isn't the crime of the gutter. Young Murdoch was driven beyond his limits. I just want this behind us. The way I've been moving people around, I feel like a traffic cop. Well, I'm going to add to your burdens. Someone accused of murder doesn't usually have an admiral for a jail keeper or the Pacific Basin for an exercise yard. Now, I don't want you to let one single reporter on this base as long as I'm defending Lieutenant Murdoch. Now, I'd like to talk to my client. He's under house arrest. Commander Andrews will escort you. Much obliged. You haven't uttered one word. Not since our struggle with the telephone. I'm not your enemy, Hester. I've tried to do what's right for you, for both of us. Talk to me. Let me help. Bryce hasn't called. Not once since that night. He can't. Not yet. Not until this calamity ends. And it 
It will end, Hester. It will. There's no mystery here, Lieutenant. You shot and killed a man. Suppose you tell me why. Everybody knows why. He raped my wife. He said he didn't. Who do you believe? My wife or that ape? I believe you, Lieutenant. I'm your lawyer. I'm here to defend you. I just think you ought to know what you're up against. Now, the whole world saw you kill that man, and you were shooting after he was dead. So it's going to be very, very difficult to get an acquittal. Do you understand that? I trust you, Mr. Bergman. <laughs> that always helps a lawyer. Now, I'm going to invoke the unwritten law. Husband's right, his duty to avenge his wife's dishonor. Is that allowable in court? No, but the jury isn't deaf. What they hear, they remember. How does that sit with you? Whatever you say, Mr. Bergman. I'm lucky to have you as my lawyer. <laughs> I hope you feel that way when this thing is over, son. Now, about those clothes you've got on, I don't want you to wear them again. You're a Navy officer. You wear the uniform of the United States Navy. I want you dressed to look like you're going to get a medal for bravery. Put Palmer on that stake out downtown. All right. And send Harlow and Shipley out to Kahala on the Jensen burglary. Have them check out all the help. Day workers and live-ins. Right. Maddox. Hello. Is it locked? Yeah. I can unlock it. We don't need to stay if you're afraid. I want you to think hard now. Anything you can remember could be important. So try and help me. What about their clothes? Were they dressed alike? 
Same outfits. Mike? Too dark, like Harry said. Did you see the car? That'd help. Harry? In Essex, maybe. Mike? Maybe a Buick 26, 27? Anything else? Anything. What? What did you say? One of them. He said, bilge. He said, pull that bilge. Yeah, I remember. Don't pull that bilge, he said. They used their belts. Big belts. It was a Buick. A 29. The one that tied me. He had a tattoo. Good for you, David. What was it? Did you get a good look at it? That big snake. A cobra? Yeah. yeah, a cobra. That lynching party came off the true blood. I know it. Bilge, tattoo could be. But you don't see many sailors with a car, Captain. First go to Pearl and get the true blood crew list. Mm -hmm. Pictures. Did it have pictures? Here, detective, find out. Then find Sanso Fujito, that pig farmer. Maybe you pick up a lead. Mm -hmm. Check Wailuku Road, where he found the kids. Going up in a ridge and nose around. Will do. Hold it, I'm just starting. When you get back over to the Department of Motor Vehicles, bring a lunch. You're going to tell me if a sailor off the True Blood owns a car. Thanks, Captain. Like you asked, Captain, the whole trial, from the first day to the shooting. Perfect. Thanks. I want to show you guys something. The officers, Lieutenant Murdoch and Lieutenant Parker. Do you recognize that sailor? Yeah. That's him. That's he was there. You're positive. Oh, he I was hitting Mike. The one. I just want to find him. That makes two of us. Got. The car is registered to Dwayne Leroy York. He's in a gun crew on the True Blood from Macon, Georgia. Yeah. You talked to him? The closest I got to that destroyer was a shore patrol station at Pearl Harbor. Admiral's orders. He's a new law around here. What about the farmer? No, he told it all that day in the hospital. You might as well stay downtown. <laughs> then I wouldn't have found this. It was up on the ridge. It doesn't belong to those boys in the hospital. I'd love to know who W.T. is. Maybe he could tell us. Thanks, pal. Mars, this is Captain Matt. He's in charge. You know why you're here, Forrest? Well, yeah. He said questioning, but uh, I haven't done anything. I was just hitchhiking. Sure. The guy at the Army Navy store said this is the real thing. Just like the one you guys wear. You and three of your pals kidnapped those three boys Saturday night, didn't you? Oh, uh, no. No, that's not true. You're probably all off the true blood. Just like Lieutenant Murdoch. Was this mission his idea? Hey, look, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Sure. Maybe it was another one of your options. Bryce Parker. Is that right, Forrest? No. I, I mean... There was no officer. You brave men just thought this up yourself then, huh? 
Hey, look, you're wrong. Tied him up and beat him with your belts. Well, that's not true. You used Dwayne Leroy York's car. Hey, honest. Honest. I... Who's WT? I, I don't know. Is he the one with the tattoo? Look, I, I swear I... You swear. Here's where you're at, hero. Those three kids identified you from a picture in the newspaper, and they'll do it in court. So you're going to prison all by yourself, you and your secrets. You'd be too old to remember them when you get out, if you get out. I think the county attorney can get the jury to give you a life sentence. Wait a minute. says you're not allowed on this base, you please remain in that vehicle until he arrives. Hold it. Jack. End of the line, Captain. Not this time. These are arrest warrants for three men. Dwayne Leroy York, Conrad Hensel, Wesley Trask. You're talking about Navy personnel. I'm talking about kidnappers, about scum who almost whipped three kids to death. And I'm tired of your stinking rules. Pearl Harbor in a foreign country. Just point us at the true blood, Commander. Admiral Langdon, right away. Maddox says four enlisted men kidnapped and beat those three natives. One of them confessed. Still, we can't announce to the world that vigilantes have taken over Hawaii. Turn them over. That's one hell of a precedent, turning over Navy personnel to local authorities. I can solve that for you, Glenn. Get rid of them. By the time they go to trial, you'll have processed their dishonorable discharges. <sighs> Meanwhile, he keeps invading my command. You were supposed to neutralize Maddox, Harvey. Well, I thought I had. But I'll make certain of it. He won't trouble you again. Come. All right, sir. Got them. Here they are. Remember, Captain, your prisoners will be civilians. That doesn't clear you, Admiral Larry. You're a man. You can't fumigate this place just by shoving them off on me. This place stinks, but it's about to get cleaned up. That's a promise. Take your prisoners and get out. Keep your discharge papers ready. I'll be back. Come on, Jack, let's clean this garbage out of here. Move. You make me feel new. As though you've invented me. I think you have. I suppose I've always been afraid of living. I was probably the most protected person ever born. My father and Walter were friends from childhood. Walter never married, so I grew up with two fathers. No one on earth could have been happier. Not until about 10 years ago, when both my parents were in an auto accident. I was so lost. So you got 
got married. We saved one another, don't you understand? I gotta remember. John Little Ohe didn't die because he was mistaken for someone else. Lloyd Murdoch didn't kill him by mistake. Lloyd Murdoch set out to kill John Little Ohe. He loaded a lethal weapon. He brought it to this building. He deliberately confronted John Little Ohe, and he pulled the trigger again and again at point-blank range. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Bergman, your opening statement. Uh, Your Honor, the defense would like to ask a favor of the court. If the court agrees, the defense would like to postpone its opening statement. Well, the court can grant your request, counsel. We'll recess until 2 o'clock. We'll hear your opening statement then. Uh, Your Honor. <laughs> My fault, Your Honor. You'd think after all these years I'd know how to make myself clear in a court of law. What I meant by postpone was to keep my opening statement till the prosecution had finished its case. Finished? If the court will indulge me. Would counsel approach the bench? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Just exactly what are you up to, Mr. Bergman? Well, it's not very complicated, Your Honor. You see, I, I have an awfully hard job here. And if I, if I make my opening statement now, all I'll be doing at the end is just repeating myself. It seemed to me the best way for me to help my client was to uh, save what juice I have for the finish. Sounds fair enough. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Murray, if we recess now, will uh, prosecution be prepared to begin its case when court reconvenes at 2 p.m.? We will, yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. This court is adjourned until 2 p.m. Madame, starting at 2 o'clock this afternoon, I want your daughter in this courtroom for the remainder of the trial. My daughter's very delicate, a fragile creature. Yes. That's a condition she shares with the majority of God's creatures on this planet. She is also a tragic, wounded young woman. The world mourns for her. Her husband's life is at stake. So, I want her in this courtroom all day, every day, looking tragic and wounded. That's impossible. Madame, I didn't come halfway across the world to lose. I need Hester Murdoch if I'm to have half a chance. If she is absent at two, I will be absent, and I will tell my client, I'll tell the judge, I'll tell the press. Doris Ashley forced me to leave this case. Captain Maddox, did you see Lieutenant Murdoch shoot and kill John Lilowohe? I did. Where were you when the murder occurred? I was standing over by that doorway. I saw Murdoch get up out of his seat and pull out a gun. I started over toward him. Then what happened? I was late. He started firing. Lieutenant Lloyd Murdoch started firing at John Lillor. That's right. Thank you, Captain. The defense has no questions. Now, Mr. Billings, when you examined the murder weapon, did you fire it? Yes, I did. Did the markings on the bullet match those of the bullets taken from the body of John Lillowohe? Yes, they did. No further questions. Cross-examine? No questions, Your Honor. Please tell the court your name and your profession. My name is Sergeant Jack Keller. I'm the Texas Sergeant Honolulu Police Department. And you were in this courtroom when Lieutenant Lloyd Murdoch shot and killed John Lillowohe? Yes, sir, that's right. How close were you to the scene of the murder, Sergeant? 
Over there. Captain Maddox grabbed Murdoch. I got the gun. Thank you, Sergeant. Your witness. Cross examine. No questions. I was at the bailiff's table. I first saw Jack, Sergeant Keller, and Captain Maddox running along that barrier. Please go on. Well, Captain Maddox grabbed Murdoch, but it was too late. He had already shot the defendant, John Luluohe. What did you do then? My partner Roger and I took Murdoch into an empty jury room until Captain Maddox came to him. Your witness? The defense has no questions. Your Honor, the prosecution rests. Mr. Bergman, you'll be prepared to proceed at 10 a.m. tomorrow. I will, Your Honor. Spare me a few moments, Captain. One of your lads brought me this chair, another bonus for growing old. Not much reward. Hot today, wasn't it? This official business? Oh, no, no, nothing official about it. We're coming to the end of the trial. Seemed proper for me to pay you a social call. Sure, what's on your mind? See, this handkerchief is mine. Saw one just like it in my wife's room back at the hotel. Now, what would someone as ladylike as Lenore be doing with that handkerchief? Take it in the ridge pole, you got yourself a tent. Doesn't belong to me. Belongs to you. I'm waiting for you to say something, Captain. It's your social call. Still hot. Do you mind opening a window? Hasn't been this hot since I've been here. Is this usual? I'm not the weatherman. What do you want? There's one woman and two men. Woman bears one man's name. It's not yours. Let's get to the point. Leave my wife alone. You ought to quiet down. Someone's love. I'm not your garden variety gaga waiting for a wheelchair and a lap robe. Leave Lenore alone. I'm not giving her up. If it isn't me, it's going to be someone else. I'm one of your hooligans. You think some cop can take her away from me? Blow from the boondocks, a hick, a foot. You. Uh, 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 uh. I need help, fast. In here. Jack, call Miss Bergman at the Royal Hawaiian. It's her husband. Right. Has he ever been in a diabetic coma before? No, never. Why doesn't he regain consciousness? I can't tell you. We gave him 50% glucose. That's the specific for diabetic coma. That's all we can do. His heart is strong. That's a positive sign. You'll be okay, Captain. 
Mrs. Bergman says thanks for everything. Where is she? Upstairs with her husband. She's staying the night. I've been trying to catch up with you. They keep me hopping. Well, stop hopping. I told you a while back to drop this case. It isn't finished. It is for you. What the devil's gotten into you? I've always depended on you. Always thought of you as one of us. Us? You don't mean one of us. You mean one of your servants. Aaron boys. One of the gang around here who works for you. Well, just so you understand. I understand. You're the one who doesn't understand. Those four kids were innocent. The courts will decide that. The courts and you. You told me to quit on those kids, and God help me, I even did it. Well, that's over, too. I don't work for you. I got a job. You wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for me. You're headed for more trouble than you ever imagined. One of us is. Bergman, the court will hear your closing statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Gentlemen of the jury, I've been a lawyer at the bar for over 47 years. I have practiced law in this cherished nation of ours for almost half a century, almost 50 years. And it is one of my proudest boasts that in all those years as counsel for defense, I have never once faltered. I have never strayed. I am the advocate for all victims of injustice, those uncounted thousands who have been pilloried by the forces of evil and venality. I've seen astonishing changes during my lifetime, gentlemen. I have witnessed amazing discoveries. I have watched the machine replace man, and man vanquished the bird flying beside the eagle and the hawk. But in all those years, despite all those changes, one institution has remained constant. One commandment is immutable, impervious, to man's conquests and discoveries. Justice. And justice is all I ask of you, gentlemen. It is all Lieutenant Murdoch asks of you. Justice. Lloyd Murdoch was a small town boy, reared in the eternal verities. And as he approached manhood, he chose his life's work. He chose to serve his country. The hallowed halls of United States Naval Academy in Annapolis have but a single purpose, to produce the officers and gentlemen who will defend America against her enemies on the high seas. Officers and gentlemen. Such a one is Lieutenant Lloyd Murdoch. Now, the county attorney did a pretty good job here. He uh, he showed you the gun, the murder weapon. He proved whose fingerprints were on it. He even had people at the scene who identified the man whom they saw fire the gun. Please excuse me. Well, the county attorney did not Another crime that took place right here in Honolulu. A rape 
that occurred on the night of last September 5th. Objection, Your Honor. Counsel is introducing inflammatory and highly prejudicial material which has no relevance to this case and has never been proven. Your Honor, I will law. connect it. The relevance will be made apparent in a moment. Your Honor, a man is fighting for his life. Surely the court will concede him a chance. Overruled. Continue, Mr. Bergman. Thank you, Your Honor. On the night of last September 5th, young, innocent, trusting, joyous bride, the happy wife, the United States Navy officer was seized by four men and raped. Dragged into the underbrush, raped, set upon by one after another of her captors. And when she resisted, when she tried to fight back, they beat her. Those animals beat her. No! No, they didn't you do it. They were innocent. They didn't do it. They're innocent. They're innocent. They're innocent. They're innocent. is I'm a coward. That's why you didn't see me here before today. But I couldn't leave without coming. Are you really all right? Honest, sure, we're okay. Turn around. Turn around. You boys, you don't know it, but something historic happened here in the last couple of weeks. I live long enough to see a jury find a United States Navy officer guilty of a crime in this territory. And yesterday, I heard a judge sentence that Navy officer to 10 years in prison, the same prison where they'll put those four who whipped you. I want you to make something of yourselves. You understand me? If he can do it, you can do it. And uh, I'll be back to check on you. Aloha. Aloha. So, when are you getting married? Married? I don't know. You know, you can't go on acting like two sleepwalkers forever. Here's my gift, my engagement present for you. I've got a couple of rings that go with this. I'll bring them along when I come back for your wedding. Where the hell's that elevator? Hi, Doc. Get yourself some coffee, kid. Yes, sir. Take your time. See the news? 
kind of got off easy. Maybe you will, too. I haven't done anything. You're an unconvicted felon, Doc. You were lying on the witness stand. It was the truth. Uh-uh. I was there. I heard you. That was no therapeutic abortion you performed on Hester Murdoch. I ought to know. You sure as hell do. That's why you lied. I didn't lie. Come on. She was more than a month pregnant. I just left Lansing. He spilled it all. It was his idea. She was his patient. Jack, see if Lansing's in the building, will you? Right, Captain. You never talked to Lansing. You tricked me. Uh-huh. Look, Howard Lansing is the criminal. He's the one to blame. I just followed orders. Well, we'll just sort it out between you when he gets here. Lenore, I booked passage for us on the SS Lotus. Got just what I wanted, the finest suite. Better start packing. She sails at three. Today? Three o'clock sharp. Have to get a move on. I'll help. Wait. Why must we rush away? I'm all done here. The judge sentenced Murdoch yesterday. That finished it. I got a murderer off with a verdict of manslaughter. I didn't win, but I don't believe anyone can say I lost. But why must we rush away? Are you going to break your promise? What promise? When I was in the hospital, you said you were going home with me. If that isn't a promise, it's a commitment, a bargain. Walter, I said I wanted to talk to you. Talk. This isn't the right time for it. I didn't choose it. You did. You've put us on a ship. If we don't talk now, when do we talk? When? I've heard about this place. Never thought I'd see it. This is your lucky day. Where the hell's Murray? So this is Windward. You're late. Well, I couldn't help it, Kurt. Got a call from Walter Bergman. Wanted to say goodbye to me. He and his wife are sailing today. Going off on the SS Lotus. I want soft colors everywhere. Gentle, serene tones. Light blue, pale gray blue. We're here to see Miss Ashley. Will be able to dine there again shortly? I'm planning several small dinner parties. What is it, Marika? Mrs. Ashley, we're here on an official matter. We'll meet again tomorrow, promptly at 9. I resent this invasion. I'll bet you resent it. Invasion's right. This is enemy territory. You're going to do a lot of resenting today. I demand that you leave immediately. We'll settle that right now. Show the warrant. Very well. Come in. Now we can get down to business. I have no business with you, with any of you. The hell you don't. Unfinished business, Miss Ashley. You and me, we ran on this from the beginning. And now the two of us are going to end it. Do me a favor. Get Miss Murdoch down here, will you? Kurt, take it easy on her, will you? This is an officer of the court. We're here on a criminal investigation. Where's the girl? In here, Miss Murdoch. 
You have no right. Nobody has any rights except you and Harvey Koster and the U.S. Navy, money and power. I'm innocent. You probably believe that. You spent your whole life thinking whatever you did and whoever you did it to is right. Nobody ever stopped you. You built the territory, so you figured you owned it and the people on it. And you did. You do. But that's ending. You can't kill people, and you can't whip them, and you can't treat human beings like they aren't human. And that's what you've been doing since you stole this land from the people who found it. Just because your grandfather came off a ship 80 years ago doesn't make you God. That's all finished. And so are you. She was three months pregnant. I've got confessions from Dr. Lansing and Dr. Puana. So now we can prove those boys didn't rape your daughter. Someone was coaching her, and it wasn't her husband. That leaves you. No. Yes. Tell her, Phil. Mrs. Ashley, you're being charged with subornation of perjury. That means you caused someone to lie under oath. You're also being charged with conspiracy to obstruct justice. And there is a third charge of committing perjury yourself. Mrs. Murdoch, you lied under oath. You committed perjury. And we're also charging you with conspiring to obstruct justice. I think you want to finish what you started in court the other day, Ms. Murdoch. Who beat you up? The kid who brought you to the hospital probably saved your life and got killed for it. And the man responsible is walking the streets. The three kids who helped John almost got killed. Your husband's loyal crew tore him to pieces. It was Bryce Parker. Bryce was the father of my baby. My dead baby. Yeah. You're both under arrest. The police officers will take you downtown. You better pack a bag. Pick up Bryce Parker on aggravated assault. Take a couple of men to get down to Pearl Harbor. Put the cuffs on. What about you? Do it, Jack. They're all yours, Phil. Bye.